Hello, my name's Christopher, and today I'm going to show you how to install MailPit on Cost OS using Big Bear Cost OS, a third party app store. So, a little bit about this series I'm going over Home Labs or installing things, getting things set up, everything like that. So, if you're interested in that, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel. And let's get started. I wanted to let y'all know about the Big Bear community. We just launched a uh, community on community.bigbeartechworld.com. It's based on Discourse. So, Go on there, join it, and uh, say hi. So, let's get back to your registered programming. So, MailPit is a SMTP server. You can send mail to it, and you can see all the mail that comes to it. It's really nice, and it's great to have on your local system to where you can e easily start an app up. If it needs an SMTP server, you can just add this one to it, and then you can see all the mail coming to it, like if you're doing a password reset, or if you're getting status updates, things like that. This is gr great for. Um, this is what the UI looks like. It has an inbox, uh, mark red, a delete, and uh, different features. Uh, this did replace uh, MailHog, well, it, it was inspired by it, and MailHog is no longer uh, maintained. And um, so we'll get to installing it with uh, Big Bear Cost OS. So uh, we'll be starting with Big Bear Cost OS. Uh, there will be a link down in the YouTube description to get to it. And th this, is, uh, this app store is maintained by Big Bear Tech World and Big Bear Community. It has quite a few apps now, and we try to keep them up to date. Um, I, I did make a video on how to install Bibber Cost OS on Cost OS, but I'm going to go over it in this video as well. You will need Cost OS 0.4.4 newer. Um, so, uh, we're going to copy this App Store URL right here. And then we're going to go over our Cost OS and get this installed. So we're going to start on our Cost OS. I'm going to go to App Store right here. And then I'm going to go to Add Source over here. And then I'm going to paste it in. Now I'm going to say add. Now we have 124 apps. And if we go to search box um, and type in mail, we should see it now. And you know it's coming from Bibber Cost OS because of this right here, the category. Um, you'll be able to see the category after you refresh the page, go back in the app store. And then you can see all the apps currently in Big Bear Cost OS. So we got the store installed. Now I'm going to start on Big Bear Cost OS. There will be a link down in the YouTube description to get to this. I'm going to go into Apps. And then I'm going to scroll down to um, a mail pit right here. I'm going to go into it. And then I'm going to go to Docker Compose. So the Cost OS, uh, net, uh, the, the app ID is called Big Bear a Mail Pit. I'm going to set some services. And then the service underneath the service called App. And then the Docker image is this one. It's coming off Docker Hub because there's no URL before this. And the Docker image tag is a 1.7, a V1.7. I'm going to set a container name, which is MailPit. I'm going to set a restart policy of unless stopped. So if you stop it for any reason, it will not try to restart. But if it fails or any other reason, then it will try to restart. I'm going to set some volumes. So data, app data. Dynamic variable, which is coming from this one right here, the name up here, and then data. So this is on the host side, and this is on the container side and data. I'm going to set some environment variables. So the time zone is UTC. You can change this to your own time zone. Set some ports. So 8025 is on the host side, and on, on the container side is 8025. On the host side is 1025. And then on the container side is 1025. So um, if this does collide with another port, you can change them. I'm going to set some uh, cost OS specific information to explain uh, the environment variables and ports and the volumes. So right here. And um, I'm going to set some cost OS specific information for the app store actually. So the architectures that the Docker image up here supports. Um, is AMD64 and ARM64. The main right here is populated by this service up here. So it has to be called main up here. Uh, it, it has to be called app, I mean. And then the main is app right here. 
And then a description is uh, right, right, right here for the App Store. The tagline is Mail Pit. The developer of Mail Pit. And then the author of the Docker Compose. The icon used. The thumbnail. And then the title. And then the category is set. So you can easily find all the apps in, from Big Bear Cost OS. And the port map is 8025. So the 8025 is what the web UI will be on. So it's right here. So that's a little bit about the Docker Compose. So now I'm going to start on Cost OS. I'm going to go into App Store. I'm going to go in a search box, type mail. I'm going to go into it. Then I'm going to press install. What this is doing is it's pulling down the Docker container from the registry, getting it extracted, getting it up with Docker Compose, and then showing it's up. So we got it installed. So I wanted to let you know uh, about the Big Bear Club. Uh, 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 you can join it and it greatly supports this channel and I very much appreciate it. So uh, if you'd like to join the Big Bear Club, you can go down the YouTube description and uh, go to my Ko-Fi link and join it from there. So let's get back to registered programming. So I built a little small script to test the SMTP server using Telnet. So I'm going to um, uh, start in Big Bear Scripts. There'll be a link down in the YouTube description to get to this. And I'm going to go scroll down to test SMTP connection right here. And then I'm going to go into run.sh. So we're going to set some default values for the server, the port, the sender, the recipient, the subject, and the message. It's going to be a regular HTML body. Um, so, um, now we're going to ask the user some info that we need. So, uh, in enter the SMTP server. It's, it, it uses the default one by uh, default. And it asks the user for the SMTP server. It asks the user for the SMTP port. But it will use a default one of the 1025. It will ask the user for the sender uh, email. And use a default one if not provided. Same thing with this one and the email subject and the message body. And then once we get down here, we're going to put it all together and send it with Telnet to the SMTP server and the port. So um, that's a little bit about the script. So I'm going to go backwards to the bash script right here. So I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to go over to my terminal and test it out. So now I'm going to run the script. So I'm going to go to my terminal. I'm going to paste in the command. And then I'm going to press run. Which is return or enter. Um, so we're going to need to enter our CostOS IP address here. So once you do that, you just press return or enter. We're going to go with 1025 for the default. And then enter sender by email. We're going to go with the default. And default in this. So return or enter for these return or enter and then the message body i'm gonna just go with the default it is sending it now so we got an okay and queued and then it's good to go so we should have the html inside of the mail pit so i'm gonna go over the container settings now so i'm gonna go up these vertical dots and you can open into the web UI. You can set some tips. So this is like a notepad. So you can just put something in it, press save. It'll reload the container, say mail pit is okay. You can go back in and you can go to tips again. You can see it did save. You can go to settings now and container settings. You can change some things in here and then press the save button. You can also go up here to terminal logs. You can have a terminal straight in the container. You can also go to logs, so great for debugging. And you can export the Docker Compose right here. I'm gonna exit out of here. So you can go back in the vertical dots. You can check for updates for the current tag it's on. It won't change the tag. You can uninstall, restart, and power off and on. So now I'm gonna show you where the files are. So if you go in the files app, and Cost OS makes it extremely easy to look at the files, so you can go into it. You can go to app data. And you can go up these horizontal dots, download, copy path, rename, cut, copy, share, delete. You can also go and check mark these and download, copy, cut, delete, cancel. You can go into it and you can see data if anything's in here. So 
that's a little bit about the files. So now I'm going to go in the web UI now. So you can open it from here, or you can go in these vertical dots and open it from here. So you can see our test email that we sent. You can go into it, HTML source, text, and he headers, and raw format. You can also mark as unread, delete, and you can see the message date and the size. You can go over here to download, so raw. you can download the raw message, the HTML body, the text. You can also, when there's multiple emails, you can switch between ones. You can go back and return. You can delete all the emails right here, and you can search the emails. You can also go up here to show how many emails you want to see in this table right here. You can go over here to light mode, dark mode, and then auto. So that's a little bit about the UI. So I just went over step by step on getting MailPit running on Cost OS using Big Bear Cost OS. This makes it to where if you have a local app that needs an SMTP server to work, you can easily pop this one on and you can see all the emails that uh, get sent to it. So, if you like this tutorial, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel. And if you have any video suggestions or any community support, you can go down to the Big Bear community and join our discourse. There's a link in the YouTube description, so stay tuned for more.